up, guys? How y'all doing today? Welcome to this live. Baby, it's going to be a long one. We need to talk about Sean Diddy Combs. If you guys don't know, Diddy just posted a birthday tribute to Kim. Now, listen, I am disappointed, but not surprised. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me give y'all some good volume. I know I'm always coming on here with the echo in the echo, but let me give y'all a good, a good thing. Okay. We're locked and loaded. Okay. Here we go. Right. So Diddy, listen, I'm shocked, but not surprised that Diddy had the nerve, the gall, the audacity, audacity to post a tribute to Kim Porter on her birthday. Now, I know what y'all saying. This man has no shame and he doesn't. But the reason they said that Diddy did that is because, of course, that is the mother of his children. But also they are saying that Diddy is at the end of his rope. If you guys don't know, Diddy is in Miami. Upon information and belief, allegedly, right? He Well, he's in, sorry, Scratch that. He is not in Miami. Kamora Lee was in Miami. Diddy is in London right now. He has been hiding out in London. Now, a lot of people thought that he was in London working on his comeback. Yeah, he was. That is now scratch. People said, oh, he must have been like getting it. You know, Uncle Gene Dill said, you know, he must be in London getting his knee pads out, trying to see what he can do with Diego. He was doing that, however, because he's fighting over that 15 million because he needs salaries. However, he is in London. People are saying hiding out at his billionaire sugar daddy fairy godfather's house, Ron Burkle. If you guys don't know, Ron Burkle has a massive estate in London. He has ties to London. He has he owns one of the biggest talent agencies in London. A lot of people call them the CAA of the EU. He is in London. But guys, this Kim Porter tribute that he posted, let's get it up. It's a little bit deeper than that, and it's a little bit darker than that. Now, just to let you guys know, this is what he posted if you haven't seen it. He said, we miss you so much, Kim. Happy birthday, beautiful love forever. Now, I know a part of y'all like me were like, why the F did you post that? This actually makes no MF and sense for you to post this. However, it can, if you believe the streets, right? My sources, right? The reason he actually posted that is because this is a last ditch attempt to see if he can actually beat this if he can get public sympathy. Now, I am beginning to think that there is something mentally wrong with Diddy. It's like when people like get caught in lies and then they show up saying people threatened them and try to hurt them. And you're just like, man, just admit you got caught in a lie and just move on. It lets you know there's like really something wrong with the person mentally and nobody's buying it. With Diddy, people have said, maybe it's narc tendencies. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Maybe we going to get into all this. First of all, I got some tea on how Diddy is doing in London. And, this, and sources are saying upon information and belief, allegedly, Diddy is ready. People are worried that he is ready to delete himself. It seems like the shoe has dropped. And it seems like he finally thinks that his money and connections are not going to get him out of this, okay? We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about the way how Cassie and her husband came to be. There's a lot of stuff going on the streets about that. Did he actually, I guess, learn the truth? And now he is just really, really upset over that too. Because in a weird way, he's thinking that this was an all a con from the beginning. We'll get into that, right? Also, we're going to talk about why he is in London with Ron Burko. I mean, at the end of the day, if I was going through stuff too, I want to worry about why somebody is literally hanging out. Like, like I would be under my billionaire sugar daddy too. But also with Ron Burkle, the ties to Justin, and how even Ron Burkle has his fingers in stuff, or very more importantly, he is releasing his fingers from. Ah, one thing we do have to talk about is that mess about Diddy's house being Reddit rated. I'm going to make a separate video about that, but I'm going to talk about it now. Yo, I have it upon good information and belief and authority what's really going on with the Diddy house raid, right? 
And also, this is the last thing we're going to talk about in this live. A lot of people in the industry, now that Diddy has gotten alone and isolated and he is not doing well at all, they are worried about who Diddy might take down on his way out. Because on top of that, he is furious. He feels like everybody benefited from his foolery. And now he's the only one that's actually getting out. Now, he's the only one actually going down. Now, listen. Um... I'm not saying that he's going to take down his billionaire friends because at the end of the day, Diddy is not that powerful. Harvey Weinstein got taken down and he was way more influential, way more powerful and had way more deeper connections than actually Diddy does. The people that are worried are the other people that are on his level. Who's on his level? 50 I'm 50 ain't worried about that, right? But the people that are lower than him on the music totem pole and on the entertainment pole, that is who are, those are the people that are worried that Diddy is actually going to give up the tapes on them. Why? Because maybe he's looking up, maybe he's looking to cut a deal. I don't know. I don't know. But they do actually say that he is super, super angry. So let's get into this, y'all. The sources that know people that know Diddy says that even though he was with his family and everybody's trying to cheer him up, he is depressed. They think that he might actually delete himself, okay? Not out of shame, not out of guilt, but he, as he sees this ramps up and he sees it's moving to actual a criminal component, people are actually saying that he's like, he is not down with that. His reputation, his money, everything Cassie took from him is what means the world to him. And the more and more he isolates himself, the more and more angry he gets. Now, when I heard that, I had to giggle and be like, so do you think he needs another freak off to blow some steam off, but there's too many eyes on him? So everybody's just like, not now, not now. You know how he said with the freak offs, there were candles around and like eyes wide shut and masks on. They were probably like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. you better take a girl to Applebee's for two to 25. We could not be having any freak offs going on. Again, this is how he blew off steam. This is what he did. But let's also not forget, this is also how he silenced people. This is also how he brought people into his web. This is also how he cozied up to richer people. Let's also not forget Jamie Foxx and everybody's been telling us that Diddy's pool parties are legendary. If you think about it, how did Diddy actually make a name for himself in Hollywood? How did Diddy actually become even a rough shoulders with these very, very wealthy people? He started his crazy wild pool parties, right? Great Gatsby style, which now looking back sound nothing but freak offs, right? And that is even how he made connections. Now that nobody can go to his parties anymore, nobody can go to his freak offs, nobody can watch the tape version of his freak offs. His allies are very much separated. Now, here's the thing Diddy did give an insurance policy by making sure a billionaire is the godfather of all his children. But what does this have to do with Kim Porter? Let me get to Kim Porter, then we'll get back to this, okay? The issue with Kim Porter is the fact that we didn't see it back then, but Diddy was always using Kim for sympathy. When Kim was alive, we barely saw her. Her and Cassie were always fighting for the number one spot. He always did cruel, evil things to Cassie and Kim. He never wanted to claim Kim. See, here's the thing. We all have revisionist history, and everybody wanted to feed into that. Oh, my God, look at them. Chocolate babies. We love them. No, 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 no. He never claimed Kim, not publicly. It was Jennifer Lopez. Now, maybe he loved Jennifer, I don't know, but he definitely thought that Jennifer Lopez had more mainstream appeal. Remember when Kanye said, Puffy taught me everything I need to know about picking out a wife? Puffy one that was the one that told him that he needed somebody waffle color or lighter in order for mainstream America to be accepted. Let's think back to the way he treated Kim, right? Kim was always the breeder the baby maker. Maybe when he was mad at Cassie, he would take Kim out to a red carpet, but only for certain things. He needed Jennifer Lopez there. When Jennifer Lopez was like, this mofo is crazy. And she literally like danced on out of there. Then he got someone that looked like, because back then Cassie and JLo really did have a resemblance to each other. I still see the resemblance, right? He got Cassie. Okay. He never 
claimed Kim. The only time he bought Kim out is when he was mad at Cassie and trying to put her in the face and put her in his place, her place. He literally got Kim. He got Kim. He would put his hands on Kim. Remember when Misa Hilton Brim actually said that Kim, as much as Kim, Puffy was still sharing the bed with her, Kim had to go to child support court to make sure he she got actual support for the kids because he wasn't trying to pay for any of the kids. OK, even when he was going back and forth, he literally had Misa Hilton Brim, that's the mother of his first child, get evicted from a house that he was supposed to pay for as part of the whole custody support arrangement. He literally got Misa Hilton Brim evicted from her house because she found out that he stopped making payments two years ago. Right. Not from today, but when she found out in 2004, I think it was. And Misa said the only reason that Puffy even acted like he cared about the kids is because Kim had to keep her his her bed open to him and that Kim he was going back and forth with Kim and because Misa was like no you can't do that he literally got so mad and that's when he cut Misa off again Puffy always treated Kim like dirt always however when Kim died he did something really, really sick. It's the same thing he did with Diddy. Remember, I'm sorry, not Diddy, Puffy. Remember when Puffy, uh, Puffy, Biggie. Remember when Biggie passed away, right? They Diddy got so many names. He got in many faces. Remember when Biggie passed away? He used Biggie's death to launch his career into mainstream America. Puffy always had money. And he was kind of like a, a, a mainstay for parties with the rich class and St. Tropez and stuff. Luna de Wino, he was having free calls, right? But all jokes aside, um, he had that thing. And everybody was like, oh, my God, he's such a businessman. He completely stopped making music. He became a billionaire just from what? 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 Oh, that's right. His billionaire boo investing in him. That's how he became like a billionaire. So he stepped away from music. But Puffy needs that shine. So when Kim died under those mysterious circumstances, okay, let's also not forget the coroner found some toxic substance. They pulled him off the case. The new coroner was like, no, 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 no. It's ammonia. And then that was it. Okay. Um, and yes, the coroner passed away as is with everybody around Diddy, right? He is the angel of death. I'm not saying he causes it, but I'm just saying he brings that energy with him, or he's just the most lucky or unlucky person, depending how you see him. Okay. People have always accused Diddy of doing something with Kim. Even if you take out the rumors that Diddy actually like did something to Kim, I think we can all agree it looks like Diddy treated Kim like trash, mentally tortured her. So after she passed, he went on this whole, I'm the best dad and I love you forever and all this stuff. So why would he post this today? Well, let's get into him feeling like he wants to end it. Diddy's original plan was to get a group of people to come out. And I already see, I saw the narrative shaping, okay? But to get a group of people to come out and be like, oh my God, you know, that's just blank. Stay out of people's bedrooms. Who cares if it was freaky? It was consensual. Nobody cares. This is what Diddy was always on, right? So he did that. But the thing is, it wasn't working. They are saying that he does not want to be around for what night, what might not be coming. Okay. By him posting this, this is his last ditch effort to see if he can turn public opinion and get back to that person that was making Kim, I love you. Let's not forget he dedicated his last album for Kim. He did all this stuff for Kim, a woman that you didn't even want walking by your side for the Kids Choice Awards. So why would he post this apart from being dumb? You guys, this is a last ditch attempt to see if he can get any type of sympathy from the public. Again, why is this so important? Because his little billionaire sugar daddy, at the end of the day, you got to think, even if somebody is a sugar daddy, even if they're a billionaire, nobody wants to be tied to a losing team. Right now, that billionaire sugar daddy is covering him, okay? But at the end of the day, how long are people going to keep backing a losing horse? You know what I'm saying?
How long are they going to keep backing a lo uh, losing horse? Even the billionaire is now looking at it if, as Puffy, are you a good investment? And the answer might be no. Interesting enough, I just want to show you guys this. I did a little digging on the billionaire, right? Let me send this to myself to see what is going on with that and just how deep the connections run. Y'all, again, if Puffy had a way to get out of this, he would, but it looks like he can't. Interesting enough, I don't know if I shared this in the last live. I just want to show you some interesting stuff. I found out about his billionaire sugar daddy and how long he's been keeping Puffy out of trouble. But it seems like this type of trouble, Puffy can't stay away from. Let me just show you all this really quick. Just a little digging. Light work, no reaction. Hold on. Okay. Let's do this. Right here. This is how much this man has kept Puffy out of trouble. Remember this? Prosecutors won't pursue felony charges against Sean Diddy Combs. The hip-hop impresario was charged with assault with a deadly weapon and making terroristic threats in June 2021 incident on UCLA campus. If you don't know, that's when he went up Justin's uh, football coach's head, upside his head, um, because he was mad that he said that Justin didn't have what it took to actually be a star football player. Justin, in that case, actually ended up leaving, dropping out of college and becoming Diddy's something. They said he was a bad boy executive. Diddy said he was going to leave the company to him. Diddy did not retire, right? All this stuff happened. Interestingly enough, if you guys don't forget, remember, Justin actually got uh, into Harvard and he would have been safe over there. But Diddy convinced him to come over to UCLA because he was going to get a football scholarship. I guess that was his Justin's whole dream. However, look at this. This is how long this man's been keeping Diddy out of trouble. Why don't you think that felony charges were filed? Well, for one, right? Ron Burkle, his sugar daddy, is the co-chairman of the UCLA Burkle Center for International Relations, as well as founder and chairman of the board of the Ronald W. Burkle Foundation, who gives deeply and greatly to UCLA. Experts have said that Ronald Burkle has given at least one to $300 million alone to UCLA. He is a heavy money donor. At the end of the day, the coach was like, we're not going, or the assistant coach that Puffy assaulted, decided to not press charges. People are saying that he actually got, um, he actually got paid off. But it makes you wonder how much this guy has had his finger, right, on Puffy, had his finger on how things went and how much he actually protected Puffy. Again, he's this, he got Puffy out of trouble, but doesn't this make sense why Puffy's 5'4 son got a football scholarship to UCLA. This man is giving 100 to 300 million. That's not even that's not even counting the other endowments he gives to UCLA. Let me show you how connected Diddy Sugar Daddy actually is. Hold on. And then we're going to get into the raid because we do need to talk about the raid, right? He's all over the place, but it's more. Right? Qatar the Emir, the Emir of Qatar and his wife, Sheikha Mosa, meet leading UCLA, Los Angeles, and Hollywood figures at, a, at the home of Ronald W. Burkle. He even has the king and queen of Qatar chilling at his house and coming to UCLA, the Center for International Relations, coming to speak. This man is powerful. This man is connected. I know that's him with Ted Turner, right? I know a lot of people say, oh, he's only worth two or three billion. Two or three billion is a lot of money. But I will say this, outside of Jeff Bezos, outside of Bill Gates, outside of Mark Zuckerberg, most billionaires push down their wealth because they don't want people knowing how much they're worth. When you look at his investments, when you look at how much he's worth, when you look at what he does, there's no way he's just worth $3 billion. People have said his real thing is between 10 and 15 billion. Again, right? And just to let you know how connected he is. But even this man that has all his power, 
all his money is now starting to move away from Diddy because they think it's not worth it. Now, come Getting back to the picture of Kim Porter, Kamora Lee has not responded. She, I don't even think she's posted her well wishes to Kim Porter, but the fact that Diddy is so bold, and I know people are saying, well, his kids, he has to do this. The fact that Diddy is so bold as to take another swipe at public sympathy for Kim Porter, again, it's because even his most loyal supporter, Mr. Burkle, is starting to lose hope. And they're saying, baby, if they're coming to get you, they're just coming to get you. I do have to say this. Um, there are uh, reports that Diddy's house was raided. I think Tough News reported that. Now, listen, I don't know all of Diddy's houses, okay? But I do think, and I'll make a report about this, that Diddy's homes in New York and L.A., have not been raided. He might own something in, uh, in Atlanta. We don't know. But the homes have not been raided. But there's something even more insidious going on. Those raids are indicative, or the raids that didn't happen are indicative of something else. The grand jury indictment, the gathering of evidence. It looks like everybody is looking in the wrong direction as far as houses getting raided because the houses that actually mean something, which is New York and Los Angeles, those have not been touched. How do we know? Because, baby, a house in New York cannot, a penthouse, a condo cannot be raided without your, your neighbors being there, TMZ being there, everybody. If anybody's ever lived in New York, you know how it is. Nothing can happen especially a raid without somebody seeing something or saying something. On top of that, TMZ has New York and LA. Uh, police, FBI, they have that on lock. Again, he might have other homes in other areas. I know that he's done a lot of dirt in other areas, but it just cannot happen in New York. On top of that, when the feds raid stuff, they be sitting there calling TMZ themselves, be in the, your kid's room, taking pictures next to the bunk beds, showing off, showing what is going on. But there is something a little bit more insidious going on. The last thing we actually want to talk about, I'll, I'll make a video about that because there's a lot of stuff I have to have actually put up on the slideshow so you guys know. The last thing I actually want to talk about is this whole thing that's going around. It's just a little bit of inside tea. Well, what's going on between Diddy, Cassie, and Cassie's husband and how Diddy actually feels about that. You guys, this is something a little bit different, okay? A lot of rumors have been going around about Diddy and Cassie and what happened. There are even rumors that Cassie was allowed to be around Alex because Alex, in the very beginning, was one of Diddy's F up, freak off people, this and that, because Diddy's so jealous, he had a temper. So why would he allow Alex to be around Cassie as a trainer if he's so jealous. Y'all, I got the inside scoop on that. I am going to get, let me spread this gossip to y'all really quick. But I did get the inside scoop on that. And baby, we got to talk. But let me say what's up. Am I fine? What's up? You said DR, Diddy is just PR stunting with that post. Yo, no lie. The people that are close to Diddy are actually worried about him. They say that he is in a really, I do think that's PR. But they say he is in a really, really, really dark place. To which I said, we love to see it. No, but all jokes aside, right? Because I hope, I hope to God he does not do anything to himself because first of all, no. But second of all, I want him to be held accountable. I think that would be the easy way out for him. I want him held accountable. He's already feeling depressed because the kid's show got canceled, right? He's feeling depressed because there's some mess brewing with MT Vi Viacom and the making of the band. There's some mess brewing 100%. A and think about it. He's fighting with Diego right now to get that $15 million, right? But Diego's like, you ain't paying like living off of this 15 because everybody knows he is broke. Nobody, ha well, not no one, but Diddy, even a billionaire on paper, does not have $100 million liquid assets. That's just not the way business works. Diddy is pressed for cash. Diego knows that he, they're pressed for cash. They're not letting him anywhere with that fun. That reality show, he was hoping that not only 
Can it help his kids? Because his kids have a lifestyle to live, right? You notice his kids haven't really been popping out like that. They've been going to restaurants and stuff, but ain't no more vacations on yachts and stuff because cash flow is uh, bad. But, you know, people are saying the same way Diddy, at the end of the day, only cares about self. They were saying even that reality show, he probably was seeing if he could work things around so that his kids got paid pennies and all that money went into his account. Y'all know the way that man is. And I will 100% believe it. You know, I will 100% believe it because that is just the way this man is. You plan to use up your kids, use up everyone and all your avenues of income are leaving all your rich friends even your sugar daddy is thinking about cutting ties with you things are getting too big the block is too hot and when they start looking into stuff diddy does it's going to keep rolling into everyone else so i can see how somebody with that much ego is like i'm not going to do this and he takes i don't want to say the easy way out because no but he's taking a way out that for him keeps him from losing his pride and again People that have delusions of grandeurs, people that maybe are nar narcissists, people, they actually sometimes, if you read clinical books, they see that as an out. You know what I'm saying? Relentless Aaron, what's up? Said, oh, pin me up, Tisa, let's go. The night pup tried to blank me is available now. Plus a new book, Surviving Diddy. Thank you so much, Aaron. Drops December 27th. Thank you so much, Relentless Aaron. Crystal Cove said, I knew it. I just said, Diddy would have, would have to be put on blank watch because he's realizing he has lost all control plus being in jail with shit must be scary as heck. <laughs> Yo, again, the people that are closest to him are really, really worried about him. I think losing, not having access to Diego money, and I think actually losing that reality show, I think he's also really scared of people realizing that he doesn't have as much money as he says he doesn't. Don't get me wrong. Diddy is not broke. He is not working at Rite Aid, right? But you get my point, right? Um, the media said, uh, you're the GOAT, new commentator here and learning so much from you, Tisa. Keep us proud. Oh, my God. Thank you, the media chat room. Um, Zara, thank you so much uh, for the super sticker. Love you, little Abby. Your daughter is so cute. Shay, thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. It's me. It's me. Sit my sis is on fire. The luxury bucket list said, um, thank you for coming, becoming a member. Ebony Larry, thank you so much. Said Tisa Jaguar in the chat, trying to talk to you now. Okay, hold on. Let me try to get into the chat. And Katie Lindsay, thank you so much for the super chat. I'm gonna get to the chat, but also, you guys, this is gonna be, I know I'm uploaded uploading late in the day. I'm going to put up, I swear to God, two more Diddy videos. We are going to talk about inside information. And also, I got some tea about, so I know this ain't, right? No, I'm not doing something. Listen, I got some inside tea with pictures about one woman and her experience with Diddy. But baby, we ain't doing any anonymous phone calls, not pointing pictures. Like literally, I'm not having my third cousin getting on the phone, right? Talk about Talk about one of these. I don't know why I thought this was so funny. Listen, let me let me play you guys an exclusive. I'm gonna play you guys an exclusive. Hold on, y'all. Uh, my my sources of my exclusive. We're not doing this because this is the way some people's exclusives be uh, be uh, uh, sounded. Hold on, y'all. Uh, uh, you guys, it's my art. It's my art. It's exclusive. Hold on, really quick. Let's see my exclusive. Oops, I wrote my own joke. Wait, how do I do this? Okay, hold on. Okay, here we go. Hold on. It's an exclusive. Hold on. Hello? <laughs> yes. I am an anonymous person. Was it dumb? Sorry. Yes. I 100% worked with Diddy. I have conclusive <laughs> proof of what happened. I cannot give my name or even the person I'm talking about, but this 100% <laughs> happened. Is that good? Is that all you want me to say? Yes. And also, <laughs> yes. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm sorry. I had to do that. I'm sorry. My cousin sent me a clip of some mess that was being, my cousin sent me a clip of some mess that was being saved or some speakerphone exclusive. And I just had to crack up. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all know I play too much. Y'all know I play too much, but I had to say this, right? I had to say that, right? Anyway, y'all, sorry. Sorry. I had to be funny. 
I know I play too much, right? I play too much. I play too much. I play too much. Okay, so like, listen, look. <laughs> if y'all saw that BS, y'all saw that BS. I'm going to give an exclusive. I cannot say the person's name or who we're talking about. So what are we doing? And then you got your third grade teacher on the phone. <laughs> Reading off a slip. Yo, I'm not knocking no one's hustle. Mofos is funny. But baby, I do want to say that Sat, before we get into this, right? I, and I tell you the story about Cassie and her boyfriend and Diddy and what really went down with freak offs and this like that. I'm about to tell you on a second. I do want to say I'm dropping a really good interview Saturday or Sunday. It's going to be a real person giving up real tea with real names. And y'all, should I be the first to say, yo. I want to give a shout out to everybody and all y'all. Guess who we interviewing on Monday? Should I say it? Should I say it? Right? We're interviewing the ghost of Kim Porter. I'm just joking. Let me stop. Let me stop. We are interviewing Uncle Gene Dill is coming to the Tattletail Nation. We getting big Uncle Gene Dill. I finally linked up with him. And baby, we are going to be doing big things on this channel. Because baby, ain't no mystery. How you doing a speakerphone interview in 2023? You're not even doing a StreamYard audio link on speakerphone like we in 1993. Stop it. We getting big on Gene Dill on the channel. It's either going to be Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday, we getting big on Gene Dill on the channel on Tuesday. Thank you, everybody, that helped me link up with Gene. Thank you so much for shouting me out. It is going to be the best live in the... Yes, we getting big unk. We getting big unk in the house, right? <laughs> we No. I ain't gonna be, there's not going to be any Uncle Gene slander here. If you tired of seeing him, then baby, get out the live. Click off. I don't understand, y'all. People be acting like this is like Burger King. Have it your way. If you don't like the flow, if you don't like the sound, if you don't like the tone of the void words coming up my mouth, y'all can go. If you don't want to see Uncle Gene, you can go. You don't got to be here. You don't even go here. You don't got to be here. This is like literally the insanity. You're going to walk into a room you don't want to be in just to stand there and tell us. But you know what it is? I think y'all do want to be here. I think y'all do. Because if you didn't, I just keep scrolling. But baby, we get an Uncle Gene. It's going to be a vibe. It's a vibe. It's going to be Uncle Gene. And I also have a special interview that's going to be dropping either Saturday or Sunday. Most likely Saturday, but turn your notifications on because y'all know me and my editing skills. It is what it is. Woo! Also, Crystal Cole, thank you so much for that generous super chat. I appreciate you, mama. Thank you so much, Crystal. I appreciate you. Really quick, Kathy McKenzie, uh, you're you're too good not to pay. Wait, you're all oh, thank you. You're too good not for some, somebody not to pay something to you. Thank you for your excellent reporting. Tonya. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Azor said the real death stroke won't be the crimes associated with blank, but it's dealings with organized crime with the fat lady singing for Diddy. Thank you, Azor TV. Everybody keep trying to turn this because there's, and I'm about to say everybody, I mean myself too, because this is very salacious, right? There's a seedy, creepy element to it, but the real thing is that's going to take him down is the fact of what's going on with what he's actually doing and the crimes that he is associated to, right? Um, Somebody says, do you think he may leave the country like Russell Simmons? Well, he is still in London, right? So he's definitely out the country. But I think what you're trying to say is actually go to a country that he won't have extradition. True. But the thing is with Diddy, he needs to be worried about like he needs to be worried about whether there are going to be criminal charges. Because the thing is with Russ Simmons, I don't think Russ Simmons ever got any charges up against him. I actually need to look into that. Hmm. Because our word is criminal. I wonder if they ever bought charges or did they just want to question him? And then he paid off people and it went away. But honestly, Dolomite, thank you so much for the super chat. I see your point. Do you think that he'll ever do that? I uh, honestly, <sighs> here's the only thing with Diddy. And this, again, I never met him. I can't psychoanalyze him, right? But I kind of feel like Diddy is one of those people that without money, he, 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 he made his whole life into money and power. 
And I kind of think without the ability to exploit other people, to hurt other people, to degrade other people, he literally is like, hmm, is life worth living? I honestly do think he feels like that. I honestly do. So when you say, do you think he'll leave the country? Russell Simmons, for whatever reason, is fine being the king of Bali. I think that that would humiliate Diddy so much. You know, again, where do things have happened? But I just don't think it's in his personality type. Because who are you going to degrade if you don't have any power? Who are you going to lord over? We all joked around when he was in um, the making of the band, making the walk like 50 miles. Even though, honestly, Manhattan's only so big. So they had to walk like six miles to juniors and all this stuff. But he loved disrespecting people, humiliating people, and putting his hands on people. Let's not forget Lori Ann Gibson filed a police report with them. Because she tried, he tried to bust her head open with a chair, you know. So we'll see. Um, listen, Miss Cat Dog, thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. And Crystal Cove, you said, Tisa, you need to stop. I saw the YouTuber that actually did that this morning. I was like, what the heck is this madness? <laughs> listen, I'm not naming any names. I'm just saying, do you guys like my exclusive? I like my exclusive. So all jokes aside, right? Let's get into the Diddy um, Cassie mess. Listen, I'm not specifically talking about anyone. I just thought that that was funny. Mixed feelings. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. So listen, honestly, I think what the issue is, so the, here's the rumor, right? And I want to set it straight because I had somebody reach out to me and they 100% wanted this set straight for Cassie and for uh, her husband, Alex. Okay. The rumors that's been going around, and I don't know what camp they're coming out of, is the fact that Cassie and Alex didn't freak off with Diddy. I know I did a, a video yesterday about the guy from South Africa that, uh, you know, five years before, you know, I know people that like literally screen recorded what I did, posted it and said it was just uh, a months before uh, Cassie, that it wasn't months before, it was five years ago because that interview was from 2017, right? So it's like, how would you know everything that's going on in 2017 if not? And a lot of people literally were like, I don't know if I believe him because they said that Diddy liked BBC, right? And I just want to say three things about that. First of all, Diddy like everything, right? I, because he's dated women from all ethnicities. If he likes men, and this is based upon information and belief, allegedly, if he likes men, um, why wouldn't he like that? Second of all, he was down in Miami, okay? Maybe that's what he was into then. This is the guy from the video yesterday. We're not talking about Alex yet, right? Why wouldn't he want that then? Third of all, even though that was put in a criminal complaint, I do want to say something about the criminal complaint, and it's important that we know this. Cassie, only, her lawyer, took down the head of the International Monetary Fund. He literally took down the man, the man that was next in line to be the president of France. The International Monetary Fund is huge. It's big. If you know, you know, right? Um, it's like Stake is saying you took down the head of NATO. He has taken down Harvey Weinstein. He has taken down people way more powerful, richer, and influential than Diddy. Honestly. And that have richer, more powerful, more influential friends protecting them. That lawyer is very astute. I know there's Douglas Wigmore and I know there's, um, I believe the gentleman's Tyrone Blackburn. Two lawyers that are doing their thing, right? Wigmore is more known. I think Blackburn is like up and coming, but he's a heavy hitter too. When I say up and coming, he just doesn't have as many cases as Wigmore, but baby, the cases he has had, yeah, he chilling, 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 right? So when you write a criminal complaint, or not criminal complaint, when you write, you file your papers, right? Um, for the lawsuit, you a good lawyer is not going to put in something that they can argue about. You know what I'm saying? I think people are overlooking the fact that Cassie's complaint wasn't just her being verbal throw up and recounting every bad thing that Diddy did. Cassie's complaint was her skill, her lawyer skillfully recounting the things that happened that Cassie can prove 100% without a shadow of a doubt. So if I'm arguing with you, right, 
And I'm like, you know, you went to the store and then you got a bag of chips and then you came home and you gave me a dirty look. And I was like, how come? And you were being mean to me. If I actually went to the store and got a bag of chips, I'm not going to argue with you about that because you have proof. There's a receipt. People saw me. You got the person that owned the store testifying like, yes, this is true. I gave Tisa a bag of chips. You know, you got all that stuff going on. So what do you do? You argue about the things that you can't really prove. I didn't give you a dirty look. What are you talking about? When did I have an attitude? That's what you do because you want to create doubt in the jury's mind. When you put shit in a complaint, right? You don't want anything that can be challenged or even better. If they try to challenge you, you slap them with all the information you have and you make them look stupid and like liars to the jury. That's why when lawyers put stuff in the documents, whether it's a motion, whether it is the rebuttal, whether whatever it is, right? The answer, it doesn't matter, right? You literally only put things that you can prove, whether you have the proof right there or whether you are 100% certain that during discovery, you're going to find it. Cassie did not detail every incidence of abuse with Diddy. She didn't. A lot of people think she did. She didn't. She detailed the stuff that she could prove. What could she prove? She could prove her being beat down in that party because the head of security saw it. And not only that, hotel security tape saw it. Not only that, people saw her walking out. There were people that could verify it. All her friends were around for her birthday party. All her friends were waiting for her to come back. That girl that he hung over the balcony, she can testify. Let's talk about the, B, the BBC. This is why they said that men are going to come forward and already have come forward. And Diddy is trying to negotiate. So I don't know. But they have come forward. Or at the very least, they came forward enough that when Cassie said that she, he liked the thing for the BBC, she said that not because it was the only thing that he liked, but because she had cold, hard evidence of the BBC that she could prove. Again, the head of the security, she named him. I think she name checked him because she also wanted to humiliate him also. However, she didn't name her friend that Diddy held over the, at the 17th floor balcony. She didn't name her friend, but I'm 100% sure that during discovery in the trial, the friend would have came and testified. She didn't name the BBC that he had her order. However, I'm 100% sure that during discovery, the names will be released and during the trial, he would sit there and he would testify. So just know that Diddy, if he does like the D, it is, it includes, but is not limited to B, B, C. Y'all get what I'm saying? Y'all get what I'm saying? So I just wanted to clear that up because a lot of people were confused. I thought he liked B, B, C. Yes, including, but not limited to, if he likes a D. Because again, Puffy has not said either way and he has not had his situation played out in court. But he's spinning, he's spinning, he is spinning. You know what I'm saying? Okay, really quick. Chrissy Fennell, thank you so much for the super chat. And also, Miss V, move your body. Said, thank you, Tisa Tells, for bringing the tea. He did, yes, he did lose $50 million a year from Revolt. He 100% did. But like I said, Revolt is in their own situation. Because everybody that Diddy was involved with turned a blind eye. And the thing with Revolt is why I would go after Revolt. I will 100% believe that anything with Cassie did not get settled by insurance at all. They would have been like, they would have dropped them. Like, we're not going to cover this. However, when it comes to Revolt, if it's just run of the mill sexual harassment, their insurance would pay. Revolt is going through a little revolt of their own about all the complaints about Diddy that were swept under the rug because people are going to be people are going to be people. Thank you so much for the super chat. But you get what I'm saying, right? Um, uh, uh, you know, listen, you get what I am saying. Okay, so let's get back into the Cassie situation with Alex, okay? So people are saying that, let's think about it. 
Diddy jealous. He was blowing up cars. He was doing this. He was doing that. Okay. To make sure nobody got next to Cassie. He, there's videos of guys being like, hi, Cassie and Diddy, like going crazy. Diddy was crazy, jealous, and obsessive over Cassie. He did not like men next to her. So people were thinking if Alex got so close to her because Alex did used to train Cassie, then maybe there was an, a freak off situation going on that got bad. And then Cassie left with, you know, a fell off, a fellow freak off person. Right. That is what it is. I mean, I don't mean to be flipping about it, but y'all, we can't be flowers bringing a slow singing the whole time. Like, again, like, listen, humor is the best thing. Right. So anyway, here's the tea with that. So. Thing is, with Alex being a former FO person and them just running away from Diddy and going away, yeah, here's what the record needs to be set straight and what, I mean, people want you to know about what's going on with that. So here's what happened. Diddy did hire Alex to train him. Okay. And the way Diddy rolls, I wouldn't be surprised if he was like, you know, why they were training. He was telling Alex, you know, has anybody ever told you your skin will look so good with some white fingernail polish? Yeah. All the guys paint their fingernails white. It's the new thing. Right. But no, all jokes aside, Diddy hired Alex to train him. Alex already had a thriving business. Now was Alex a billionaire? No. Was he a millionaire? I don't know, but Alex made a cute little coin, right? He was definitely making north, north of 800000 a year. He had a cute coin, right? North of that, but that was the base. Diddy hired him to train him. He also hired him to train Cassie. Because if you guys don't know, Diddy was obsessed about Cassie's body. In my opinion, he was obsessed with trying to turn her into a Jennifer Lopez body when she wasn't originally shaped like Jennifer Lopez. Cassie has a cute body, but you know what I'm saying? He liked the, you know, the Jennifer Lopez body. He had already made her get the blanks, right? If you guys don't know, he made Cassie get implants. And when she came home that day, so much in pain, he flipped out that they were too big, went and threatened the doctor and made the doctor take out them in like a few days and put in smaller ones because he wanted, in my opinion, right, based off of information and belief allegedly, for her chest to look more like Jennifer Lopez's. Um, the doctor did it because he was super, super intimidated. Oddly enough, that plastic surgeon did pass away two years later, driving on the Pacific Coast Highway back to his house, a road that he had driven a million times. I don't know. It's a weird coincidence, but everything with Diddy is actually a weird coincidence. Okay. So he had gotten the top fixed and it looked a lot like Jennifer Lopez's resembled, I would think Jennifer Lopez's cleavage, but there was one issue. He needed the bottom fixed too, because as you know, Cassie, you know, cute body, but he wanted that Jennifer Lopez thing. So after what happened with the uh, um, with the uh, chest thing, right? Cassie was very hesitant to do any more surgery. There were a lot of complications because she went under surgery two times. There was scarring. There was just all this stuff, right? Diddy talked around and people are like, listen, Cassie got enough to work at. Y'all can just go into the gym and she can get a donkey that way. If you guys don't know, ladies... If you have anything back there, getting into the gym consistently for six months when the trainer knows what they're doing can give you like, if not a wagon, baby, can get you a little push cart and give you a little something. Right. So anyway. Right. Um, so anyway, uh, that happened. So Diddy hired Alex to train Cassie so her booty could become more Jennifer Lopez like. However, Diddy was very, very jealous and he made sure that Cassie always trained when he was training with Alex. So in Diddy's mind, Cassie was never alone with Alex. They always trained together. Now, do I think in my mind that Diddy might have had plans to scope out and see if Alex could be taken to the dark side, excuse the pun? Probably, probably, because Diddy was into humiliating control, seeing all the stuff. But here's what happened. 
So they're training, training, training together. Why? I don't know. Diddy just sounds like he's that weird creep trying to get a throuple going, right? Cassie at this point is pretty much, she is completely dependent on narcotics. She is like a, everybody said, basically his slave. She is just like in a bad way. Okay. So Cassie goes, um, and, um, Cassie and them are training. Here's the part. Are y'all listening? Put your sound up because y'all need to hear this. So when Cassie like gets to training, everybody is being more and more friendly. That's the problem with Diddy. Everything is friendly until it's not. Okay. He's training more and more. He's seeing the way that, um, you know, Diddy's treating them. There's all this stuff going on. Cassie, again, she is not in the mindset for any type of relationship. She's not time for anything. This is Diddy's slave. So here's what happens. Okay. I have based upon information and belief, allegedly. Okay. Something happened at one of the training sessions. Something happened. There was a look. There was something said. There was just something that enraged Diddy, enraged him. And Diddy tried the first time, Diddy tried to put, get aggressive with Cassie, okay? He tried to get a Cass, uh, aggressive with Cassie while Alex was there. Alex's mother, as you know, is a DV survivor. He and It wasn't like, Pow, 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 diddy bop, right? I got to speak in code because it's YouTube. If you guys think it's flipping, grow up and fill in the goddamn blanks, right? So he had the diddy, you know, he didn't diddy bopper, but it was mad aggressive. And Alex de-escalated the situation. Again, at this point, Cassie wasn't seeing left or right. Everybody that's telling this rumor wants to paint Cassie like she's this Leota, Leota, Le, Le, Lolita, well, She's too old to be a low leader. But you know, this, this little minx is just like, mm, what's up, Alex? You know, the, no, 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 no. No. Cassie was not looking left or right. The only reason she was even training with Alex, two reasons. One, Diddy wanted her body to look more courageous on the bottom, but a natural, right? A natural pump. And also, let's not forget that when you go through a BBL, the recovery process is super, super intense. OK, even for the first few weeks, it's just super, super intense. Even getting back into your normal activities are super, super intense. Right. Diddy didn't want Cassie out of commission for those freak offs. She didn't want him, her out of the commission that long. The chest is one thing, but the booty takes a long time to heal. He didn't want her out of commission. This is another reason why he wanted to do the thing with trainer at this point. Cassie didn't, wasn't looking left or right. The only reason she was meeting with the trainer with Diddy is because he was basically making her, right? He, she did what he said. So the first time Diddy tried to put, get aggressive, something happened. He would get a little bit more aggressive. It almost, if you can believe what people are saying, but to my opinion, when I think about this in my head, it was almost as if he was trying to exert his authority over Cassie and Alex by making Alex witnesses, but also exert his authority like, yeah, I can treat her any way I want. It was weird. It was like a weird psychological play. I can't say that I'm in his head. I just do know that it was weird. So something else happened. And this is when things got like, crazy. Oh, also whole Southern cooks. Thank you so much. You said, I believe he's headed to financial ruin. Yes, he has the money, but net worth isn't what's in your actual account. Those millions he's losing is adding up exactly. And the thing is, he has no way to make that money. I just don't think Diddy has as much money as we think he thinks he does to support that lifestyle. And I truly do believe that Diddy doesn't want to be around if he can't live that lifestyle. B what's up? You said 5.5 .5 in the K and only one. 5.5 in the chat and only a thousand likes. Please hit that like button. Thank you so much, B. I really honestly can't believe that y'all literally having a freak off on me. Y'all doing a freak off on me and don't even care. Got me out here doing everything. Literally. 
and not even blessing me with Cardi A bracelets, you know, not even blessing with Cardi A bracelets, you know. Um, okay, so here's what happened with the Alex stuff where things really hit the fan, okay? And this is what enraged Diddy. Okay, so we're back in the gym. Cassie's there just being like, you know, his like little zombie. And I'm not saying that to make light, right? I'm just saying like, the, we don't cry on this channel. Like everybody's been through stuff. And I find it odd. And here's the thing. I respect everybody's feelings. If you need to come from a place of, you know, tears, fine, cry. Because it's somatic release. If you need to come from a place of avoidance, fine, avoid it. But no one should be telling anybody how to deal or react to trauma. You can police your trauma, but the way other people react to trauma, whether that is laughing, making jokes, crying, let them. You handled your trauma the way you want, but let other people handle their reaction to trauma the way they want. You know, I think that's what some people miss, right? They want, they want to control everybody else's reaction to their trauma. You can't do that, right? So, um, so they're in the gym and, you know, did he spin like, cause that isn't that what like abusers do, right? Um, they, they test your, they test your patience, right? They test your limits. So they're in the gym, right? And something happens again. And this time Diddy's acting like crazy, right? Like, <laughs> like just crazy. And Diddy goes in a weird I guess he's trying to be alpha, but he's coming across as beta male if you even subscribe to that. This weird thing in front of Alex, right? Where he literally puts his hands on Cassie in front of Alex because Cassie, right, is not doing what he wants to do. Again, this is not getting into any perversion, no freak offs, nothing like that happened. Alex was really just training. At this point, Alex had so many celebrity clients. Hey, need Diddy. Yeah, it's always good because back then it's like, oh, I'll train Diddy and his girlfriend. But he's really just like, yo, what the F is going on? Diddy puts his hands on Cassie. Now, at this point, Alex and Cassie are not messing around. Alex and Cassie don't have anything. But what Alex does have is the memory of, they say it's his mom. I don't know if it's actually his mom. That's, I, I, I don't know the different, the, the backstory between Alex and his mom and stuff like that, but it doesn't matter. When Alex did that, he did what anybody would do that doesn't have fear. Cause at the end of the day, he's like, I don't need Diddy's money. Diddy is an asshole, an a-hole anyway. He's rude. He's mean. He's condescending. You know, you have those clients where you're just like, yo, you lucky, like you lucky. Right. So Alex in his mind, he's like, he's training football players. He's training a whole, he trains actors on movie sets. Like the whole act. He's like, man, whatever. So he didn't have any fear to work. Diddy. Diddy had the nerve to put his hands on Cassie and try to H-Town stomp her in front of Alex. Alex jumped into protector mode. Alex literally got with Diddy. Baba, it was a real Diddy bop to protect Cassie and to stop what was going on. Okay? At that time, at that time, Cassie's mind was so messed up. She didn't leave Diddy. Now get this, it's not like Alex was like, oh my God, leave me, because there was nothing romantic going on. Alex did what any human would be. If you saw someone's significant other start to violently diddy bop them, you would intervene. He intervened, right? Puffy was like, oh my God, don't know what happened. This, somehow it got resolved, right? Even though now he's just like, yo, what's going on? It was never been, it was, uh, it happened again, right? I think it happened a third time. Each time Alex was like, yo, what is going on? I believe the third time it happened, that was the charm. Alex was like, I can't do this. Like, I cannot do this. I know this is a high profile client. I know this, I know that, but I'm not about to stand there and watch that happen. And Diddy around this time was getting more and more mad because at the end of the day, you've seen Alex. He can't beat him. He's getting more and more mad. Fine. Again, that weird psychological play where Diddy needed 
to see to to need it. And my this is all my opinion. If any of this can be believed, right? Upon information and belief, allegedly. But my opinion of it is Diddy needed Alex to see him debase Cassie. Again, it's weird to me that a lot of stuff from the Diddy to the Aaron Hall to everyone, they need other men to see them mistreat women. Maybe it is, I, I, and I can't even say it's homoerotic because I don't think gay men like have some type of erotic about, ooh, we're going to disrespect women, mm, right? You know what I'm saying? So I can't even call it homoerotic, but it's just some, I'm sure there's some type of kink named after that. I just don't know what it is, you know? So Alex like rolled, right? Told Cassie like, yo, like you deserve more, like whatever. Cassie wasn't trying to hear it. Not because she was dismissive, just because Cassie wasn't in a good space. There was a post on Instagram years later, right? Alex always wondered about Cassie, this and that. He wanted to separate, right? You know that thing, rich people are crazy. You see crazy stuff. Sadly enough, it wasn't the worst thing that Alex seen, but it was enough that he was like, I don't want to be a part about this. It's turning my stomach. Diddy goes... So Cassie posts something on Instagram. I'm not going to tell you guys the post because um, that's going to <laughs> give too much away. But several years later, Cassie posts something on Instagram. It triggers something in Alex because he's like, yo, is that mess still happening? He slides into her DMs to let her know, yo, but I know we haven't talked in a while. I just want you to know that I hope things are good. You know, blah, blah, blah. You deserve more. Whatever the case is. But he slides into her DMs to check up on her, to see how it is, to see this, to see that. They start talking in the DMs. This is several years after she left Diddy. Because apparently that mess with Alex, right? That mess with Alex really stuck in her head. Because that was like pretty much the first time that any man that's been around Diddy actually defended her. Okay. So several, you know, time passes. She remembers that that was the only man that Diddy actually did this stuff that actually defended her, pulled him off, literally was her protector, not just once, but a few times. But, it, you know, at the end of the day, you can't make somebody leave somebody. Right. So that happens. He slides into her DMs. She's single. They start talking. Okay? Friends. It's not even friends. People that know each other, reconnected, turned friends, turned lovers. It escalated. Cassie was at first afraid to pursue the relationship because, like, don't forget, Alex works with a lot of people. Allegedly, there's a lot of videos of Cassie circulating around. Okay? People think a certain thing about Cassie. And once she wasn't under Diddy's umbrella, those whispers that they said about her being Diddy's this and Diddy's that and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Those whispers becomes mocking, cruel laughter. So Cassie not only is gone, but there are people talking trash about her because they feel like they can pass judgment now because you're not under Diddy's protection. Alex didn't care. He put all that on his back. And I'm not saying it was all that. It's just the point that, you know, Cassie came with baggage. He said, that's all right, baby. You see these guns, I can carry that baggage. Okay. So, right. They start dating. Cassie wants to be on the low about it just because she doesn't want to invite the devil back into her life. Y'all remember that even after Cassie had a kid, Diddy made a song saying, yeah, you happy with him? You can't be, yo, just come back. Just bring the kid. It's cool. Come back, right? Diddy's always thought that Cassie would come back. But the thing is, right, when Diddy did that last thing about Cassie, I need you, I love you, like whatever it was, it was some post, that's when the very next day, right? Oh, that's right. Diddy posted something on Instagram. Why Cassie was developing her relationship with Alex and getting closer and whatnot. Diddy posted, a, I think, a picture of Cassie on his Instagram stories. And that's when Cassie said, I'm not going to live my life like this anymore. And that's when those pictures popped up the very next day of her at a party with her mom, 
with Alex and just to end on that slideshow and just to make sure we understood there was a picture of her kissing Alex. And that's how the story of Cassie and Alex happened. It was never any free calls. It was never anything untoward. It really was. Alex was the only man that she could remember, right? And when I say she could remember, like, yeah, that literally Diddy did that mess in front of, and he jumped into action and tried to help her as much as he could. But unfortunately, Cassie wasn't in the mind space. You know what it is? You cannot leave something until you're ready, no matter how much you want. Cassie left. She really, really went out of her way to get sober. As a matter of fact, she credits Alex with helping her get sober before the birth of their first child. One of the reasons people say that she actually had the baby so quickly, right, is because she felt like if she had the baby, this obsession Diddy had, and of course, I'm sure they wanted the baby, but also it would prove to Diddy like there's no choice. When he started making those songs about, yeah, just bring the baby, I don't care, that's when Alex started stepping in. Because Alex was always popping off at Diddy. A lot of people say like, oh my God, Alex is using Cassie. A Alex has his own money. Alex has his own coin. Yes, Cassie is rich, rich, rich right now. But prior to that, Alex was the breadwinner. Alex probably continues to be the breadwinner. I don't know. But the point of the matter is, that is a story about how Alex and Cassie came to be, which is one of the reasons why maybe Diddy was so mad when Cassie popped up with Alex. Maybe Diddy was like, wait, I was supposed to be there. You know, you just never know. Sarah, you said finally got some extra to donate to one of my faves. Thank you so much, Sarah lady. Appreciate that. Also, little Jay said, women need to find the courage to speak up for themselves and learn to be themselves before getting into relationships. I want to just present agree with that. I 100% agree with that. But I think the reason is society tells women, get in a relationship, get in a where's your marriage, where's your, blah, blah, that everybody rushes into the relationship because we have like programming with romantic comedies that when you are in the relationship, you will be valued, loved, respected, protected, taken care of. And that's not the case. You want to truly learn how to love and value yourself. It's very, very rare for other people to devalue, devalue you. You know what I'm saying? But the good thing about being a woman is, because we've all been through it. Somebody plays us. Somebody does this. Somebody hurts us. And the most dark things, maybe people are putting their hands on you. Like women, if you haven't gone through it yourself, you know a friend or someone you love that has actually gone through a lot of stuff. You know, so like at the end of the day, that is one good thing about being a woman. You are resilient and you know how to bounce back. And women, it's like we got to do our own therapy and like get to it. You know what I'm saying? You know, but I do think that the reason is we're always told date, marry, do this, do this, this. So it's kind of like you're rushing. Like I got to get it. It's like you feel like it's musical chairs. I think if we right, as women that raise women and fathers that raise women right? If we actually take a step back and be like, it's cool. What's the rush? Mm -mm. You make sure somebody's good enough for you. You are the gift. You people talk trash about Lori Harvey. I know. I know. With Diddy. Y'all re remember that picture of Lori Harvey when she was walking with Diddy? And to me, and there's that picture of Steve Harvey, Marjorie, Lori Harvey, and Diddy having lunch. And Diddy and Lori are laughing. And Steve Harvey is looking at Diddy with the most disgusted face I've ever seen in my life. And Marjorie was looking so disgusting. But that's what lets me know that um, Diddy crashed that lunch. Because you know Steve Harvey. I think that's the last time we saw her around Diddy. You know Steve Harvey was not going for that with Lori. You just know. You just know. Tiffany R. said, you're the goat, Tisa. Also, Cassie posted that picture around one month after Kim passed away. Diddy was so hurt. I was so proud of Cassie. Yeah, because you don't remember when Kim Porter died? Cassie started going around Diddy again, not to get with them, but she knew the family. She knew the kids. Somebody passes away. She wasn't there for Diddy. She was there for Kim Porter and the kids. Cassie was actually pretty tight with Diddy's kids, right? They all super tight with uh, Kim Porter's kids, all his kids, right? So Diddy 
was using Kim Porter's death to weasel back into Cassie's heart. But Cassie was like, I'm not here for you. I'm here for Kim and the family. And when he tried to like see like, oh, what's up? She showed him what was up, right? She did. She posted that picture around one month after Kim passed away. Did he should have been hurt? He should have been hurt. And the fact that it was a trainer, I think he was probably hurt because he wanted he wanted Alex for himself. I'm just saying. I don't know if the rumors about Diddy are true, but it seemed like he wanted Alex for himself. Woo! Listen. Cassie dumped her boyfriend for Diddy, so let's not talk like she was an angel. Bobby. Let me be nice, right? Can y'all be real? Like, can y'all be real, for real, for real, for real? Cassie met Diddy when she was turning 18, going on 19. What do you mean she dumped her boyfriend for Diddy? What was she going? This was, first of all, this was Ryan M. F. and Leslie. Ryan Leslie had, like, he's not. No offense to Ryan Leslie. I don't know truthfully what happened between him and Cassie's relationship. I do know that he was a producer. I do know he had access to lots of women. I do know that Cassie was 18 or 19. Cassie leaving Ryan Leslie was nothing to Ryan Leslie. She was 18 or 19 years old. The fact that y'all are sitting here trying to crucify an 18 year old girl because <gasps> she broke up with some dude that she had been dating for a year. Yes, people break up with their boyfriends. What is your point? She dumped her boyfriend for Diddy, so let's stop acting like she was an angel. What? I, we're talking about someone that had a blank trafficking ring, and you're talking about somebody that broke up with her boyfriend to be with someone else? Yes, that is what happens. I do not want to cheat on you. I am going to go see someone else. We are not married. I'll see you. It's been fun. That's all you owe anybody. Especially when you 18 and 19, I can understand if it's 40 and we talking about, look, I'm 18 years old. I'm 19 years old. I see somebody I like better. I'm going to break up with you. See ya. I didn't cheat on you. I hope it's fine. Literally. What, like, what do you want? Ryan Leslie didn't miss a beat. He was never heartbroken. He moved on to someone else. What does it, Bobby, I should have blocked you. What does that have to do with anything? Bobby, go sit down. Literally. No, I know you're right. That didn't. Um, and Ryan Leslie is a Harvard University graduate. Okay. Lots of people graduated from Harvard. All right. He's smart and he's a producer. Okay. I'm not saying Ryan Leslie was a, a bum. I'm just saying that at 18 years old, you found someone you like better and you broke up with your boyfriend. How does that in any way, shape, or form play into anything that happened? Like, shut up. You were no angel. That's right. Because I should have been a good little maid and stayed with that man till he broke up with me. Because don't you know, every man that shows you attention or likes you, baby, you better hold on to that relationship. Get to that marriage. Because that didn't we just talk about? Who said it? Did we not just talk about? Women need to have, because they hold, before getting, they need to learn themselves before getting into relationships. Didn't we just talk about the way women are literally forced to either be in relationships or play like musical chairs? And you talk about, she's no angel. She broke up with her boyfriend. Yes, that's what happens when you're not married. And if her boyfriend was so into her, it wouldn't have been her boyfriend. It would have been her fiance. And if her fiance was so into her, it wouldn't have been her fiance. It would have been her husband. You see how that goes? Y'all be expecting wife benefits for a boy less than boyfriend antics. Broke up with them. Damn right. Anyway, um, little Jay said, as a man, I learned so much from women, even if I had to be yelled at to sleep, learn the lessons. Bless up to you. So that's right. And thank you so much. Danny baby said, thank you for all the hard work and great content. We love you, but thank you so much guys. But honestly, you guys like, listen, um, Ryan is 45 years old and still not married. Listen, we're not going to drag dry Ryan Leslie, but as women, just because a man likes you, and wants to be faithful to you, that is the bare minimum for getting into a relationship. 
You also have to be compatible. You also have to make me smile. You also have to feel like I inspire you just as much as you inspire me. It's not enough to be like, oh my God, this man likes me and he wants to make me his wife. That's not enough. What does the man bring to the table? How does that enrich my life? The same way men are like, if I want to marry this woman, how does she enrich my life? How do I feel like I cannot live? How do I feel like she is the most special woman out there? And I'll never have another. The same way men ask those questions and weigh their odds before they ask you to marry them, it's the same way a woman should be. Okay, fine, you like me, you're faithful to me. That's the bare minimum. Thank you for that. But that's the bare minimum respect you give anybody in a relationship, no matter what. Even like if you're in a committed, that's the bare minimum. How much is he gonna enrich my life? How much do I? Does he make me smile? Do I want to be tied to this person for the rest of my life? It, is he so special that I can never find another man? Those are the questions you need to ask yourself. And the answer is no, keep it moving. Keep it moving. What you going to wait for it to happen? Anyway, Tokyo. Oh, I'm sorry. Takoko, Ingra, thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. Anyway, you guys, listen, I'm going to drop two more videos tonight, probably three. Make sure you stay out on lookout. Let me get out of here. Don't forget, we're doing something special this weekend. And don't forget, Uncle Gene Dill is going to be on the channel. And I am going to step things up because I have a few exclusives that I need to actually get out there. Also, the woman, her experience with Diddy and baby, we got photographs and it ain't no maybe. All right, y'all. Listen, um, let me know what you think in the comments. Oh, really? Car Caribbean Queen said the truth is women who aren't protected are preyed on. Exactly. And the sad part is a lot of times women think they're protected and those protectors are preying on them. But again, women who aren't protected are preyed on. But you know what I honestly think? Yes and no, because I feel like women that are in a situation that where they need to be protected, the men that are supposed to be protecting them often enough prey on them, if that makes any sense. So I agree with you, but... It's a lot more nuanced than that. I just think that I haven't seen, that's not true. What am I saying? I'm surrounded by protectors, but I'm saying as far as in general in society, I don't think right now, and at least in the podcast and the manosphere, that they're thinking about protecting women. They're too busy asking like, what do you bring to make it seem like, are you worthy enough for me to protect you? When like old school, just the fact you being a woman a man is going to step in to protect you, whether he's sleeping with you or not. If they see a woman get disrespected or treated bad, you step in just like Alex stepped in to protect Cassie and wasn't nothing going on. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying. But I see your point. I definitely see your point, Carib uh, Caribbean Casanova. I'm like Caribbean queen. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean Caribbean cream. Y'all know me. I just make up names. Caribbean Casanova. Anyway, you guys, let me get out of here so I can make these videos. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. All right. Bye, you guys.